Okay. You remember we started with the um, um, with wind energy. We went through the principles of wind energy, okay? And um, and we discuss how it is created. What are the turbines used to generate uh, electricity? Turbo generator, different type of design, the wind farm, and um, also the parameters affecting the operation of wind turbines and uh, how we can um, uh, consider the losses, different losses uh, facing the turbine to generate highest amount of energy and power. Now, you remember also in the formula for power, we mentioned that uh, there is V to the power three, with the velocity rises to power three, from where it came, the third, because we know, we understand that when we talk about energy, wind, wind which is air, in motion, we are talking about kinetic energy in this wind. As example here, as you can see, okay. As you can see, one over two mv square. This is the kinetic energy, what we learn in secondary school, and we know this. But when I talk about power coming from wind or in the wind, I will. I know that it is rho a. Rho is the air density. A is the area swept area and V is the velocity, but rises to power three from where it came. This is part of what we are going to discuss and we will see how to design the wind turbine and how to look to the technical and economic aspect through example at the end of this session. Now the final shape for the form used to calculate power from wind turbine is one over two rho, rho is the air density as I mentioned, area A, Area, swift area. C is the constant, which is base constant, 59%, which is the highest theoretical amount of energy could be or power could be captured from wind. And V to the power three, velocity rises to power three. And NG, the efficiency of the generator. And MB is the efficiency of the gearbox. Okay. Now, uh, as I mentioned, BIS say there is 90, 59% is the highest wind could be captured from wind energy, okay? But what is available, the, 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 let me say, the turbo generator available in the market, it's in the range of 25 to 45. Still uh, research going on to improve this efficiency. Now let, let use this formula in calculation. Let's assume we have a small wind turbine. This wind turbine have a diameter, one meter. Its operating frequency efficiency is 20%. Wind speed is six meter per second. And he want me to calculate the power and energy uh, for coming from this turbine. First, I will calculate the area. Okay, it's circle, pi r square, pi r is diameter over two square. I have that diameter, it gave me one meter. So I got the area. Now air density, usually it's given as a constant unless he told you that a different value. And sometimes it happened because of these represent the mole cause available in air. And also I got the area. Also V, he told me that V is six meter per second. When I substitute, I got this power, one zero one. What? But usually, uh, definitely I will multiply by 20% efficiency to see how much at the end. At the end, you see that the efficiency reduced it sharply. It's only 20 watt. Now, when I come to find the energy, I need to multiply by the uh, uh, number of hours per year, which is 8,760, not 50, 60 hours. Okay. Now, when I multiply it, I got my final number of energy in what hour, how much watt hour I produce yearly from this small winter, which is encouraging. If I compare it with the power only, Look into the power 20, you may say it is millis for the for the turbo generator. But when I look here to the energy, no, it is interesting. And I'm talking about 177 kilowatt hour yearly. Now the wind turbine, as you can see here, this is the wind turbine. Our cost distributed on the system, we have the tower. We, we, we invest in the tower, 
it, it, there is a specific cost for the tower and the bases. And for the turbo generator, this is the turbo generator. We have here three blades, and this is the suit area. The diameter here specify the rating, as I mentioned before, the rating of the generator. And also, I mentioned to this graph, which tell me the power with respect to the speed. Increasing the speed, increase the power. As you see here, exponential. We started from where? From cutting. Cutting is the lowest speed, which is useful to produce, uh, to capture wind energy to produce electricity. As example, four meter per second. And then it's going up, increase until this is exponential. You see curve. And until we reach here, here is the final part, which is the linear part. And then we reach the maximum rating. Rating, it means, as example, the wind turbo generator, its rating is 5 kilowatt. Here, when we reach this speed, it will produce 5 kilowatt. If the speed increase, it will not increase because it reached the maximum, as you can see here. Okay? Now, we will continue increasing the speed, if you see here, until we reach a point, the speed has become dangerous for the wind turbine to continue. We have to cut out to stop it. Now, if I distributed the cost of wind turbine, okay, it will be the cost capital cost, the, 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 the amount I pay at the beginning. When I purchase the wind turbine and its, its accessories, I pay this at the beginning. If I have company and purchase this one, is there any loan? Did I got any loan from the government or from the bank? This is need to be considered. A fuel definitely is the wind and wind is variable. It's not constant. OK, sometimes it's calm, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's medium, sometimes it's high. So based on the speed, I have different fuel. It means I have different outputs and this means different revenue. The operation and maintenance, if there is rent, insurance, commissioning, decommissioning, all of all of these represent extra amount to be added to the cost. For calculating cost of energy, because at the end you want to know how much it costs you, the kilowatt hour, how much it costs you, because you will compare between this and the grid and the diesel generator and the solar energy and so on. You want to know which one is the cheapest which one give you the lowest cost of energy. We, we will discuss cost of energy at the end when we will reach the point where we discuss the conservation, energy conservation and the cost technical, economical, uh, let me say, analysis. But as a general simple formula to calculate the electricity, the cost of electricity or the energy, we divide the total capital cost by the annual multiplied by the annual rate by how much I produce the energy production. And then I will calculate the fuel cost. Here definitely you know the fuel is wind and the wind we don't pay for. Plus the annual operating and maintenance cost. Here I'm just giving the simple formula. We will go to the details when we reach the energy conservation. Also divided by the annual energy production. It gives you the cost. But what happened in wind is, I, I mentioned that there is no fuel. We don't pay for it. Similar to solar energy, we don't pay for the fuel. It's free, it's renewable. But what happened for wind energy, the prices are what we want them to be. It depends on what you want in your country. As example, I will give here two scenarios. Scenario number one, this one and this two. Now, the first scenario, I'm, I'm comparing between gas and wind in both. The first scenario, let's assume the life of the wind turbine is 20 years. We designed it to stay for 20 years. Or another scenario for only 12 years. Let's assume here the discount rate in the country is 5%, while here is 12% increased. Okay? Then you can see here for this situation, this scenario, long life for the wind, discount rate is low. It seems to be here, you see, the cost is lower than the cost of the gas. So it's cheaper, I go for wind. But if the life of the turbine is low, the discount is low, is high, sorry, then you can see the wind will not compete. 
Now, wind energy, wind energy now is, is taking over many other type of energy. As example, I remember in 2014, it take over, it take over the nuclear, nuclear energy in the world. Now, just to let you know that we can build our wind, wind turbine or wind farm, the plant, we can put it on land, we call it onshore, or in the ocean, in the sea, we call it offshore. Offshore is more costly, okay? As you can see here, this is the cost of energy from offshore comparing with wind with onshore on the land. And also, I mentioned for this before that the, the rating when it is increased in any type of, uh, let me say, uh, energy systems, when we increase the rating, the cost will go down. We saw this in solar energy. If you are purchasing one mega, if you go for 100 mega, then definitely it will be cheaper. 1000 mega, it will be more cheaper. And this is clear here. You go for high rating, you have the cost going down. And also we mentioned before for the uh, rate, the, the diameter of, or the swept area and the diameter of the turbine. If the rotor, if the rotor diameter increase, the power generated, the, the energy, the yield will increase. As you can see here, rotor diameter increases from this direction. Here is the yield in kilowatt hour per square meter. We can see the relationship growth. One more issue before I start the technical aspects is if I compare offshore and onshore, on land and in the ocean, and I did a breakdown for the costs, turbine, foundation, road, electrical grid, all these things. Let's have a look at the final number. See here the cost. It seemed to be onshore is cheaper than offshore. And this is right. You see here, you see here, this is, these, these are firm, one firm on land, as you can see. While here, wind turbine in the ocean. You see, this is in the ocean. Now in the ocean, many things need to be considered. Yes, we didn't waste land. Yes, there is no disturb much disturbances coming, similar to, as example, on land because of, um, let me say, building or trees or whatever. Here, it's open space. But at the same time, taking the energy to the grid is difficult under the water. Also, building the wind, this large wind turbine in the ocean, considering the waves of the water and oh, many things, corrosion, erosion, all these things increase the cost. Also, the access, how the worker access for maintenance is difficult. It's not that much easy. Finally, is comparing comparing between the cost of uh, the different system, energy system. We can see that this is onshore and offshore here. You see here? If I make line this way, I can see that there are many other technology, as example, uh, um, nuclear, coal, gas, is higher in their cost comparing with onshore uh, wind uh, energy. Now, here are some papers, some of my articles related to this uh, particular point, talking about the economic aspect, the design and improvement in the design. Okay, I will try to put some of them in the Microsoft team. Now, let me take you to the formula. Also, back to the formula, we, we, we mentioned that the power delivered from the wind turbine system is 59%, 0.59, which is 16 over 27. This is the build constant. Multiply by 1 over 2 rho v to the power 3 by the swept area by the efficiency. Efficiency could contain different elements, I mean uh, generator efficiency, turbine efficiency, if there is gear efficiency, and so on. But what, and don't forget, don't forget that power density in wind is only rho v to the power three. And when we multiply it bear by 59%, 0 0.59 or 16 over 27, it means this is what we can capture. Now next, the area came to specify how much we will come up with. But back again also to the velocity, we say cubic velocity, which velocity we are talking about here? Now, we mentioned that we measure the speed using an anemometer. 
right? When we measure it by using an emometer, it take could be by minutes, by 10 minutes, 15, 20. How long? Per hour, per day, per week, per month, yearly. How we how we deal with it? How we substitute here? Now, usually we're supposed to have mini cubic velocity, and we need to consider this. It's not the average, the normal average. This is the mean cubic wind velocity. It's different from the normal average, arithmetic average. Have a look, have a look. Here, if we assume, I will talk about this example to clarify it, but let's assume, let's assume. The arithmetic average is V bar. The ratio between the cubic mean, the average one, with respect to the arithmetic, if they are the same, if they are the same, this means that the wind speed is stable, constant through a whole period of time. And the ratio between them, gamma, will be one. But if they are different, it will be appear rises to power three. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. Let's assume these two scenarios. Scenario one, the, do the whole day, the speed measured to be 10 meter per second at any instant of time. So if I want to find the average, it will stay 10 meter per second because it is constant divided by, multiplied by any number, divided by the same number, it will be the same. Now, if I come to the energy produced by this 10 meter per second, forget about the area, the row, one over two, only look to the V to the power three. It will be 10 to the power three, it will be 1,000. Let's take another scenario. That the speed is now 50, 50 five times, 50 meter per second, but not the whole day, not the whole period, only 20% of the time. 20% of the time. Now, I will multiply 0 0.2, 20% of the time, by 50 to the power 3, it will give me 20, 25,000. You see, here 1,000, here 20,000. Even, even if I multiply 50 by 0 0.2 to find the average, arithmetic average, it will give me 10 meter per second. It is the same average here and here. But because we are dealing with V to the power 3, the energy will be different. So this tells me that it's not important to have a constant or stable or continuous. It's good, but it's not the major, the, 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 the crucial element. The crucial element, how much the speed. If the speed high, this is good, even if it is for part of the time. And also to mention also that you know when we put our weather station, our anemometer, we put it on a, on a height. As example, the height could be 10 meter. If we go up 20 meters, definitely when you go up, the speed increase, the wind speed increase. If I have, let me say, the speed at 10 meter, and I want at a 20, I don't need to put another weather station and take measurement. It's costly. So what they do, people? They use this formula, one over seven formula. What it say, this formula? It say, if you want to calculate the velocity at a new height, multiply, this will equal to velocity at a specific height, let me say 10 meter, multiply by the new height, as example here, 20 meter, the new height, over the known height, which is the 10 meter height, rises to power one over seven. Very simple formula. We don't need to put any time we want to change to see how much the speed. We don't need to put another anemometer to do the measurement and repeat the same procedure. Just do, do it. Do it once at a specific height, and then you can reflect it using this formula. Also, you remember we talk about solar energy. There is a huge amount, intensive amount of energy coming to our planet. It's in the range 173,000 uh, uh, terawatts. And part of it to be used as a solar energy approaching our land. But small part of fraction, which is 3%, around 3%, okay, of this part of the solar energy captured by land, by water, produce the wind, okay? So only a small fraction, but this fraction, how much it produce? 
to produce 3,600 terawatt. If I compare this 3,600 terawatt with the previous, just a few years back, how much humankind energy consumed on this planet? We will find it's only seven terawatts. So imagine if I use wind, I can cover all my needs. If I know how to use it, if I have the ability how to use it, then definitely we will have more than what we need from energy, just from wind. Now, the graph here is a typical graph for wind energy. As I explained for, for power and wind speed, we started at cutting when the rotor starts rotating and it's, it's become feasible, as I mentioned, for meter per second, and then it's increased, okay? Until we reach here at a specific point, which is called wind, rating wind speed, and here it gives me rated power the rated power of the generator designed for. And increase the speed will not change the power. It will still the same power because I reach the maximum. Until I reach here at a specific point, we call it cutout. We have to stop the wind turbine. It happened as example when tsunami came or uh, hurricane and cyclone because the speed is very high talking about um, um, let me say 100 meter per second plus minus, this is uh, become, uh, let me say, dangerous for my wind turbine, I may lose it. And also, for solar, the solar radiation fluctuates through the day. The wind also, it is not constant. Sometimes increase, decrease, sometimes it's calm. And we are going to generate electricity at the end from the turbine generator. So when we we generate this energy, electrical energy. We inject it to the grid, right? When injected to the grid, we need to synchronize the generator with the grid. They work on the same, let me say, on the same page, if I can say. Okay? So what happened is, if the wind change, the power, electrical power change, how we can synchronize this with the supply? Two methods. One method is by changing the pitch angle. You know, if this is the blade, Okay, changing the pitch angle all the time with the change in the speed in opposite way will change the output to control it. This is one method. And the second method, no, we keep it. We don't change it. What we do, we use a circuit, specific circuit. It's called invert converter. Okay, inverter or converter. Now, this circuit, we can control it to control the output going to the grid. So this is the one used. It's used what we call it variable speed drive for the machine, for the generator we are using. Now let me back to the V to the power three, power three from where it came. And to start this discussion, have a look. We assume usually that the capital P is the power and the small p is the pressure. Pressure added on the, uh, uh, let me say, uh, subject or on the blaze as example in the situation of wind turbine. Also, power density in wind, we define it to be 1 over 2 rho v to, v to the power 3. When we multiply it by bits constant, it becomes available power density. If I multiply it by area and efficiency, it becomes power derivative, as I mentioned. Now, this power at the beginning started from wind itself. What we have in wind? Wind here, we have the molecules of the air and moving. These molecules, if we assume N is the concentration for these molecules, and their movement speed, their speed is V, then the flux of these molecules will be N, the concentration times V. This is from principles. If I want to total flux, I will multiply by area, it gives me phi A. Now, I know that kinetic energy of these molecules, or let me say wind, the energy in wind, the kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv square. If I want to find the power of this wind, the kinetic energy, I will multiply it by the flux, molecular flux, to know, because this is need to be specified how much the molecular flux will come with this kinetic energy, which is phi. And since phi is nV, 
okay? I will take N and M together, and I call them rho, the density of R. And this V, with V square, it will be V to the power 3. So from here, V to the power 3 came. Now, the pressure added by these molecules, this flux on the blade, will specify how much energy I will come up from the turbine and then from the generator. Now, this is related to many things. Part of them is, we say, raw density is the uh, um, density of molecules inside the air. If it is in increase, sometimes it's humid. If it is, its weight is low, less energy, even if it is the speed is high. But if the weight is high, as example, humid, okay, more pressure will be added to the, uh, uh, to the place, and then more energy to be generated from the system. Also, I talk about the losses, uh, the share and uh, turbulence and drag. You remember, I talk about them in the last session. You need to keep in mind that the wind, when it's blowing, it's not uniform, similar to this graph. I mean, the stream here, the wind stream, when it comes and put the pressure on the plate, this is my plate as example, the plate of the turbine, and it's return without any disturbances. No, it's look like this. There is some, you see here, losses occurred. And because it's not non-homogeneous. This is homogeneous. Here it's non-homogeneous. This losses, we call it, uh, uh, let me say losses because of aerodynamic drug, and we can consider it by adding drug coefficient. We call it CD. Definitely we can reduce it by, as I mentioned before, by changing the shape, the soft blades, and, and many other uh, options I can uh, use to modify it. Now I finished the turbine. What about the generator? You need also to consider that the maximum power transfer from the generator to the grid or to the load reached when the load resistance equal to the generator resistance. We transfer the highest. This is you study this in, in level one, if you remember. And the efficiency at the end is the delivered what I what reached to my load divided by the part captured by my wind turbine. So this is output over input. These are two articles about design um, of wind turbine based on these equations and measurements in Masira, as you can see here and nine locations in Oman. Now I conclude all this discussion about wind by using this example. I want you to follow, I'm around to finish. Have a look. He told me in this example that he put wind turbine on this height, which is 10, 10 meter height. And this turbine, he added with an anometer. It's an anometer to measure the speed. And he measured the speed. He give it, he gave me the speed in this table. This table show me number of hours with their equivalent velocity. And you need to keep in mind that you have 8,760 hours a year, per year. Okay, every year, these are the number of hours per year. He told me here that 90 hours, 90 hours, the velocity is 25. And 600 hours from this total number, the velocity is 20. 1,600, the velocity is 15. 2,200 hours, the velocity is 10. 2,700, the velocity is 5. And the remaining time, if I subtract all these, the remaining time, the velocity is 0. Okay? Now, he gave me this on... Um, for, for the for one full year with respect to the height, which is 10 meter. He want me to design wind turbine with a specific, let me say, information. I will show you in the next slide. But I don't know the height, which height. And he told me you can use 1 over 7 power height for height. You remember the, the equation I mentioned? 1 over 7 equation, this one. Now, what he wants 
in his new turbine to have. He told me that assume the new turbine have 70% efficiency. And the cost is $150 per square meter per area. Also, he don't know the area. And the weight is 100 kilogram per square meter, the weight of the turbine. Now, he told me that the tower cost is 0.05 H times M, height by mass. And he told me that I wanted to design one turbine to have the optimum, the best, the highest power is 10 kilowatt. What do you want me to find? He wants me to find what is the height of this wind turbine based on this information and the best height, the optimum height, and what is the optimum swept area? What else? This is for technical. For economic, he told me that, okay, assume 18% yearly cost, this is the investment capital cost, is used, calculate the cost of energy for megawatt hour. Cost of energy for megawatt hour. Okay, I will come first. I will use the table to find the cubic average uh, wind speed or velocity. Now we know that to find the average from math, average is one over two integration because this is a cubic v to the power three, not square, and the root is one over three. Which means that I will go to the table. I will say, okay, ninety hour. The speed is 25 to the power 3. 600 hours, the speed is 20 to the power 3. 1,600 hours, the speed is 15 over 3. Plus 2,200, the speed rises to power. 2,700, the speed is right. All these divided by the total number of hours per year, 876, rises to power 1 over 3, the root. It tells me that the cubic average Velocity is 11.7 meter. This is at what height? 10 meter. Okay. Also, he told me that the cost of wind mill and the cost of tower, okay, are given by this formula to formula. If I add them together, I will find the total cost, capital cost. And he told me also use the formula, this formula, this formula V. V naught H over H naught to the power one is seven. As example, if I want to, to use it, I will say the new V, I don't know how much it will be, is the non V, just a minute, let me see how much, 11.7, okay, 11.7, multiply by the new H over 10 meter, the non one, rises to power one over seven. Okay? <clears throat> now, I come to the formula. I come to the formula. Okay. I come to the formula. Here, this constant, 1 over 2, rho air density constant, we know it, 1.2, something. By v to the power 3, I will substitute this one, as you can see here. Okay, by efficiency, by the area, just a minute. This is base constant, one over two, rho, 1.29 is given to you. The velocity is 11.7, we just calculated. Now here, supposed to have H, what I will do, I will take H to the power seven outside to keep here only one, over 10 meter, as I mentioned. By 0.7, the efficiency, by the area. Simplify, multiply this, we come up with power generated in terms of H and area. Two unknowns. We want to find them. Now, next, I will calculate the cost of the plant in dollar per watt. I will say, OK, the cost, the cost per power generated, as you can see here, total cost over power generated, total cost, we have the formula in the previous slide. The power generated, we just calculated in terms of H and A. 
Now let's simplify. We got this formula. You see here, A will cancel from the denominator and denominator. Only H left. Okay. Now what he told me, he told me find the optimum, mean the best. We know that the optimum, the best, the maximum, we, we find it by differentiate and equate to zero from principles of math. So I will differentiate the cost with respect to the height and equate to zero. And this is a fraction. So I, if it is in this way, u over v, then its differentiation will be v u dash minus u v dash over v square. This is how we learn to do differentiation. I differentiate it. I approach here and I simplify. I approach here. From this, I have one unknown h. I did the calculation to find it. It's found to be 22.5 meter. This is the optimum height to generate 10 kilo. Now I will say, okay, power generated. We have formula power generated. Okay, it's 160 as you can see here, 160. Okay, I have the the new height to the power three over seven. I will find it in what per square meter because I will use this to find the square meter, the area, how much square meter I need. I will say, okay, power delivered equal power generated by area to cancel area with area here. So we, we got the power generated in 10 kilowatt, kilowatt. Okay, now area is 10 kilowatt, 10 to power four is 10 kilowatt over the power generated in what per square meter, square meter will go up. What will cancel with what? What is left? is the optimum area. These are the technical elements I'm looking for to design my wind turbine to give 10 kilo with this specific cost. Now, last point here is the economic aspect, how to calculate the cost of energy. Now, we have formula for the cost. This is the formula for the cost, as you can see here. We have A, we have H, we have A. Let's substitute to code the total cost. Annual investment, annual cost of investment, of investment he told me 18%, 0.18. So if I multiply it by the total cost, this is how much I need. I will take it because this will be divided by the total generated energy to find how much the cost in megawatt hour per cent, as example, per dollar. Now, the energy generated is 10 to power 4, 10 kilo, multiply by this number. What this number represent? This number represent number of seconds per year. You may say, why? Because I want to convert it into joule per year, and then I divide it by 300,600 to convert it into what hour per year? Because he told me that the cost need to be calculated in megawatt hour. Okay, so I need to convert it from joule into second and then from second into hour. I got it 88 mega as you can see here. Now I will divide now the investment annual investment divided by the generated yearly generated. It will tell me that it is 8.86 dollar per megawatt hour is the cost of energy. Now I design and I propose a new design for hybrid system we have in Masira a, a diesel power plant diesel generators it's isolated from the land there is sea between them water and it's costly we don't know we don't need to uh, let me start system from zero just solar or wind it's better to have hybrid because already this generator is designed and con and connected, right? So what we will add, we will add here, as you can see, we'll add wind, we'll add solar. If, if we want battery for backup for a short period of time, together with the diesel to provide the electricity needed by people there in Masira. And it's found that there is a potential, there is potential of wind speed here, as you can see here, most of the time in Masira, if I look here to the four meter, this is, measurement taken for 12 months daily hourly data that most of the time we are in good situation we have enough wind speed 
to generate and provide the needed power. The remaining time to be covered by either this diesel generator with solar or diesel generator only. I will stop here. Do you have any question before I leave? Please, if you have a question. Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, 